Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Driven Wild. Today we are talking about rage applying and multi-apping as a gig worker. So in the corporate world, you're going to have a lot of rebranded concepts out there. And one of those rebranded concepts is rage applying. And while I hate how this has such a negative connotation to it, it is probably one of the best things you can actually do yourself, especially if you're not happy with where you are in your current life. So with that said, I want to go over what rage applying is I want to go over how this can apply to you as a gig worker and everything in between but before we do that let's go over some disclaimers the content of this video does not contain and is never intended to be legal business financial tax or health advice of any kind this video is for entertainment purposes only it is advised that you conduct your own research and consult with qualified professionals before applying anything you find online I also want to be clear that the concepts that I'm going to be talking about are going to be some somewhat market dependent, especially with what's available in your area, because what's available to me may not necessarily be available to you. So take what I say with a grain of salt. But with that said, let's get started. What is rage applying? Rage applying by definition of the manipulative news media outlets and the corporate scumbags in executive positions is where you apply for a lot of jobs in a short period of time. Not just for the money, although that does have a significant factor to it, but because you hate a number of aspects of your job. Maybe it's a bad boss that's been treating you like garbage. Maybe it's unreasonable work workloads. Maybe it's PTO being denied for stupid reasons, even though you may or may not need that PTO for some reason. A toxic work environment in general. The list can go on for days. And yes, it's a rebranded version of things that have already existed in the corporate world and people have been doing this forever. But now it's being branded in such a way that shames people for wanting a better work-life balance for themselves. The time I rage applied. When I was still an employee, I actually had to rage apply myself because I was being horribly mistreated at my job. I used to work for a bank branch within a grocery store. My branch manager worked in two different branches, the one that which they worked and another one that was relatively nearby. And that branch manager always had it out for me. She would have a problem with the most little and ridiculous ridiculous nonsense ever. I would see that she was staring at me and I would acknowledge that she was staring at me and she would get all uppity by the fact that I acknowledged that she was staring at me. She messed up the ATM machine and then blamed me for it, wrote me up for something every single day and she had a complex about being my superior and not just my manager. She denied me time off that was requested two months in advance and claimed in two months months with the people she had in both branches, which we did go to both branches during those times to cover PTO, by the way, that she could not find a way to fill the position in the meantime. She was actually the kind of manager that she was really bad to some people, but really good to others. Like she actually got gifts for people in the branch. She got a ninja blender for somebody who was moving into a new home. She got a basket of chocolates to someone who valued themselves as almost a connoisseur and of course she got me a five dollar dunkin donuts gift card and told me to get myself a cup of coffee knowing i don't drink coffee i was fully aware that she was quiet firing me i didn't identify it as quiet firing but that was the literal definition of quiet firing and if you don't know what that is i made a video talking about quiet firing and how i thought uber eats was quiet firing me i'll leave that link in the description feel free to check it out but in order for me to keep my sanity i basically applied to as many jobs as i possibly could because one i needed a time off that she denied and two i was valued so poorly it was stressing me out at an accounts payable office through a recruiter i told her five minutes before my shift the next day that i was quitting gave her my resignation used the five dollar gift card she gave me from that dunkin donuts and got that recruiter a cup of coffee as a thank you for getting me out of there. How this applies to you as a gig worker. Now, some of you heard all of that and said, oh, this doesn't apply to us. We're independent contractors. Well, we are gig workers.
Burgers, and you're half right about that, but there are a few points about rage applying that can be used in our favor. Let's say you're a DoorDash driver, right? Which, for the purposes of this video, is somebody who works exclusively as a DoorDash driver. You're not diversifying into other gig apps yet, but you are exclusively working as a DoorDash driver as a solo app. If you have a problem with getting orders consistently or have a problem getting orders at a specific time in your market, or you're just tired of dealing with all the games that DoorDash plays in your market in terms of the tips, the identification system, which really is meant for getting drivers deactivated, the contract violations, sometimes with the restaurants, etc. You could actually just sign up or rage apply to a number of opportunities. Uber Eats, Grubhub, Instagram, Cart, Viho, Amazon Flex, Shipped, Roadie, TaskRabbit, the list can go on forever. Then you go from being simply a DoorDash driver to being a full-fledged gig worker working in multiple niches and multiple opportunities. Wait, isn't this just multi-apping? Kinda, but this also applies to a W-2 job as well. You can even use your own services and own opportunities as someone who is in business for themselves, not simply a gig worker, and start to offer services services under your own brand, as opposed to working on a platform, which in my opinion can be a little bit more stable for an income for you. Benefits of rage applying as a gig worker. Now there are a lot of benefits you can have as a gig worker. Some of them are a little bit more obvious than others, but let's talk about all of them in a nutshell. Multiple income sources. If you sign up for multiple apps, there are multiple ways for you to earn income on each app at almost any given point in the day, which means you can make more per hour and you aren't so dependent on a single company giving you orders based on their agendas. And let's be honest, these companies couldn't care about you at the end of the day anyway. Oh, DoorDash isn't sending you any orders? Uber Eats, Instacart. Maybe food delivery is dead, you want to try grocery delivery. Maybe restaurants are just pissing you off at this point, so you're going with Viho or Amazon Flex for more package delivery. The important thing is, is that that you have multiple sources so that way you can have multiple opportunities at your disposal so you could be in a position of abundance as opposed to a position of scarcity less emotional dependence so with multiple sources of income you have less financial dependence on any one app and with less financial dependence comes less emotional dependence i remember seeing pedro doordash santiago's video a while back and for some reason he wasn't getting orders on doordash so he was turning on apps like Uber, Instacart, and he was making money that way. He has a vending machine business. He has YouTube as a source of income. And because of that, because he wasn't getting orders on DoorDash, he was a little annoyed in the moment, but he creates such an abundance for himself that he doesn't have to worry about making a certain amount every single day. The point is that you have multiple sources of income, and with that, you're going to have an emotional stability that you can achieve with just one source. Higher standards. With multiple sources of income, and multiple opportunities available to you and what you're going to become a part of, you're going to have higher standards for yourself and what orders you are willing to take. Maybe with just DoorDash, you were willing to take $5 orders, but with multiple apps with more consistently high pay, like Uber Eats and Grubhub, your standards are going to be more like $10 per order. Or you work on Instacart where most batches have $7 base pay and it only takes $3 to make that threshold. Maybe the standard becomes little higher and you're starting to leave DoorDash in that way. Or maybe you started with Viho and Amazon Flex and you're paid more for the route than with a single delivery. So you're doing more Amazon Flex and Viho now. But with higher standards, comes less work to achieve your financial goal during the course of your day, which also means you can make more money with less overall work. Better mental health. I know it feels like this is the same thing as having less emotional dependence, but this is just a completely different ball game. I cannot even begin to tell you about the emotional benefits of having applied to and being a part of as many gig apps as I currently am. I've had a lot of mental health challenges in my life, some of which have been diagnosed, some 
one-way charges from bad bosses, shady partnerships, and all businesses working for the wrong people and the trauma from various opportunities and communities I was a part of. But because I started to have multiple income streams, I was able to walk away from those horrific people. Uh, yes, please. There is nothing like removing the emotional attachment from an industry or a company that goes out of your way to screw you over. This may not even be a DoorDash thing for you. This may be a restaurant thing and discrimination you feel from them. Maybe it's a DoorDash thing and their support team is just garbage. Like all support teams in all companies, but that's not the point. Maybe it's a financial thing for you and the security of having an abundance of options available to you. Now, I do recommend working with professionals to help work through some of the emotional baggage you've collected over the years, but do what you have to do on that front. A world of new experiences. I've only recently started expanding into gig apps like Viho, but I gotta tell you, I've gained a lot of experience with working with other verticals of delivery and understanding the difference between route delivery, single delivery, food delivery, grocery delivery, knowing what you need to do with packages rather than food items or what to do with groceries with cold food rather than meals with hot food. Using apps that pay you properly as opposed to just depending on tips. Yes, I freaking said it. I'm all for no tip, no trip, but sometimes making $92 in two and a half hours with Viho because they thought I would need four and a half hours to do it is better than trying to squeeze quality orders out of the breakfast run. Just saying, I love the breakfast run just as much as the next guy, but I'll take a good start like that myself. But I wouldn't have known that I like this better unless I've tried it. Not to mention, it doesn't even have to be delivery. It could be rideshare with Uber or Lyft. It could be odd jobs like TaskRabbit. Maybe online freelancing like Fiverr, Upwork. The list goes on. Just be willing to try new things by applying to as many gig apps as possible. Applying to new apps doesn't mean quitting old ones. This is where rage applying in the gig economy really shines because for most people, rage applying means quitting your new job for a new one and you don't turn back to the old one at all. And who knows, the job you applied for could very well be worse than the job you just had. For gig workers, it just means we have another app to turn on. We could try it out. If we like it, great. If not, we just don't turn it on anymore. Or we find that some parts of the day, this app works great, but in other parts of the day that app is better. Viho is great in the morning. That's it. Deliver that and deliver dark great during the lunch rush, sometimes the dinner rush. DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub can be turned on any time, but the dinner rush is where it's at. But you don't have to quit an app just because you applied to more of them. You just have more opportunities available. More financial stability. Let's say your goal is to make $100 every day for simplicity's sake. It is easier to make that every day if you have more apps to receive orders from. Not to mention if DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub play silly games with you and your income, it doesn't matter because you have more apps to choose from. Oh, DoorDash says it's busy, but it's only sending you no tip orders. Try Uber Eats or Grubhub. Let's see what Instacart or Shipt is up to because there's a promotion there or whatever it is. Let's hop on Fiverr or Upwork and do some freelancing because I don't have my car available to me right now. You could try Rody, Dispatch, Viho, Amazon Flex. I can go all day. The point is, is that you have more consistency with more opportunities and the more apps you're on, the more consistency you will experience with the gig apps you currently have. Deactivation hurts less. I think it goes without saying that no one wants to be deactivated, especially since most deactivations are because they are wrongful and the platform sees you as a liability because you could become too smart on those apps. Claiming fraud referrals when you didn't even do anything wrong. Saying that they found a violation and never telling you what that violation is. Mass deactivations and claiming it was a a glitch? Layoffs feel similar where the main source of your income, or a lot of cases the only source of your income, is gone. And now you feel this pit in your stomach because how are you going to pay rent and keep food on the table? But if you have a lot of apps available to you, it can at least keep you afloat. Sure, it'll still hurt, especially if it was a pillar app in your gig portfolio, but nevertheless, you're gonna be okay because you have more opportunity available to you. Common 
pitfalls to avoid when rage applying. With rage applying and being a part of multiple apps, there's a lot of opportunity, but there are a lot of pitfalls as well. So let's quickly go over what those are. Momentum is more important than multi-apping. Some people sign up for multiple apps and think I should keep all my gig apps on. And if I get a good order on DoorDash and someone tops it on Uber Eats and Grubhub, I will unassign the app I have and then do that order. If you do that on a regular basis, your standards might be too low to begin with and you should really work on that. A lot of these gig apps tend to have a policy where they keep drivers that are busy to stay busy. They're accepting a lot of orders, so they will send you more orders. Sometimes even at the back end of your deliveries, you'll receive another order. If you're unassigning a lot of orders, you will not be able to receive as many orders and they will lag you out. If you ever wonder why the app is saying it's very busy and it's just not sending you orders, it's because you probably declined a lot. I'm not saying you should accept trash. I'm saying if you have momentum, keep it. But do how do I know if I have momentum? Well, I have a personal 10 second rule. I am a firm believer when you complete a delivery, if you count backwards from 10 and you are receiving an order as soon as you completed the order, you still have momentum. If you received an order and the order is good, take it. If you received an order and the order is bad, decline it, count backwards from 10 again. If you didn't receive an order after 10 seconds, you either do not have momentum or you're just not in an area where you can receive orders or there's just no orders to send you. It could just be a dead day. Just turn on the other apps after you've already determined that you do not have momentum at the moment. Irresponsible multi-apping. This is where people get tripped up and put themselves in positions to get deactivated and that is irresponsible multi-apping. You have a door DoorDash delivery, so you pick up an order, then pick up a stacked order on Uber Eats, and then pick up another order on Grubhub. You try to deliver all four of them while still working on multiple platforms. You do realize you're not just being tracked by the apps you're working on, but the customers you're working with as well, right? Seriously, what are you going to tell them about the route you're taking if you're driving in the opposite direction? I have seen drivers do that before, even when I'm ordering. I remember ordering on Uber Eats one time he's driving in the opposite direction he's going uh, uh, uh. I, there was a road closure i had to go around it there was no road closure i know what the roads look like i deliver on uber eats i know what's going on and even if there was a road closure you use side streets you use back alleys you don't go the opposite way don't be that guy finish your order then take other orders too many apps so work solo did a study on how many active apps is too Men. And they believe the sweet spot is three or your attention gets too distracted and you're poorly focused on the multiple apps that you're working on. And to a certain point, I do agree, but I do not believe that there is such a thing as having too many apps that you're signed up for. Now, can you be on too many focus apps? Sure. Instacart requires you to actually pay attention to the app itself in order for you to potentially claim an order. User testing, roadie, ParaWorks, the list goes on. Whereas you have on-call apps where you can have them all active at once and wait for them to call you. DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, Uber, as in Rideshare, Lyft, that list can go on too. Then there are shift apps where you need to set up a block of time for the following day or later in the day to do that work. Vho, Amazon Flex, Ship, deliver that, delivered. You need to figure out which apps you're going to need to focus on as opposed to which ones you're going to have to just be on call and treat accordingly. On call apps need to be active when you don't have other deliveries or routes that you need to be focused on at the moment. Don't cross niche ride share and delivery though because they require two different skill sets in terms of logistics. The way you drive as an Uber driver and the way you drive as a delivery driver are two different things. Not to mention if you have a 
writer sit in something that leaked out of your delivery bag. That's just not a good day for anybody. Now you have focus apps where you should have two or three that usually pay better or as good as your on-demand apps in about the same time or effort. The last thing you want to do is do a shipped order or another app that pays you less and puts you through more work and stress. That's why I don't typically turn on shipped. Shift apps should be apps that will pay you either more for being on those apps during the times of the day in which you book them or about the same as your on-call apps because you just want to guarantee that income during that particular point in the day. So if you normally make $60 in the lunch rush and you sign up for a $40 route on Viho starting at 10 a.m., that doesn't make sense because you're losing money in that way. But if you're usually making $30 during the breakfast run and you sign up for a $90 route starting at 9 a.m. and you know they could do it in three hours, that is so much better. Not to mention there is a level of sustainability and security in knowing that you're making something solid by scheduling in advance in that way. But before we get too far off the beaten path here, let's just be clear. Too many apps in terms of how many you sign up for is not possible. Too many active apps as far as apps you are working on at a time is very possible going too hard too soon some of you are relatively new in the gig economy and think after a really good first month on doordash i could make more money if i quit my job and just do this full time and multi-app my way through everything <laughs> Yuck. Yet you have never experienced a severe slowdown before. You don't really know how much wear and tear you're gonna put on your car, really, if you do it full time. You have been too glowy eyed and in that honeymoon phase to see the discrimination that gig workers really face. You don't know what your taxes are going to look like because you're too new. And some people say, give it a few months. I say, you're not a real gig worker until you have been consistent for at least a year. Either way, get a real feel for it before you do something crazy. Not just give it a couple weeks and just hop all in. Balancing gig work with W-2 work. So some of you are doing DoorDash part-time as a supplemental income and don't intend to leave your W-2 job and that's fine. But let me say a couple of things on this specifically. First of all, let's just be as clear as possible. Just because you're making enough at your W-2 job and DoorDash to get by doesn't mean you should shouldn't be diversifying your gig portfolio. That doesn't mean you should be taking crap from the boss at your W-2 job or settle for less pay at your W-2 job because you don't want to look for a higher income job because it sounds like a lot of work. Comfortable and surviving is not a reason to not become more and thrive. If your boss is giving you flack, look for another W-2. If you aren't making enough at your W-2, don't let DD be the reason you aren't looking to add another 10 K to your salary. If you aren't getting enough orders with DD alone to supplement your income or good orders on DD and you have to settle for some of the lower paying orders, don't settle for subpar orders. Sign up for other apps and make sure that you're gaining a consistent amount of quality orders. But that's also another reason why you need to have an exit strategy because gigs and jobs and things that require your time and constant attention are an income bridge to what would be a long-term goal, not the goal. Don't end up stuck on the hamster wheel of life. Running faster on the hamster wheel is not going to get you further. Don't make yourself less available in their eyes. I always say diversify, 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 start a side hustles, develop an income bridge as an exit strategy. Things to that effect, I say that constantly. But that doesn't mean you tell any app what you're planning and doing. As far as everybody else is concerned they don't get to know anything because the last thing you want is to become a target for deactivation not to mention it's not like they need another reason to not send you good orders or anything like that as far as doordash is concerned you're a lowly peasant that needs good orders to survive master tony your business is more important than a gig app so some of you are smart and are building your own business whether that is an income bridge what would
would be a long-term goal, or you're developing a clientele for yourself so you're not so dependent on the gig app specifically, which is great, and I'm excited for you, but some people have a habit of trying to maintain a certain status on a gig app, or even putting gig apps before your own business and brand because they need the immediate cash, as opposed to building up that long-term business strategy for themselves, which is really bad because not only are you stagnating your growth and progress of your own business, you're sending a signal to your clients as well as to yourself, by the way. You don't want to send this message to yourself and your own habit building subconscious that your own future is not as important as the future of these gig apps. Let's be honest, these gig apps don't give a rip about you, and sometimes not even your clientele don't even care about you. If you're smart, build your own business, build your own clientele, put them first, and then put other brands after. Your future depends on it. Did I miss anything? Is there something else, another angle in which I haven't spoken about in this video that we should be talking about? Let me know in the comments. Let's make sure all opinions are heard and every aspect is taken into account so that way we can all be financially stable in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.